welcome back to Eurygina 120. I'm Jeff Cleck, and this is one of a series of, vi of videos that I'm trying to get across uh, things that I picked up as a student of computer science in the University of Regina. Um, today we're going to have the first of a good couple of uh, videos within this series, uh, well not the first one on uh, logical fallacies, but uh, the first of many more to come. Uh, this one we're going to be talking about the modal scope fallacy. Uh, so what is the modal scope fallacy? Um, it has been quoted as, quote, uh, it's hard to think of a philosophical mistake that has done more damage, or done more intellectual damage, than the modal scope fallacy. Um, that's from fallacyfiles.org. Uh, and it's believable, because this is one of those subtle, um, kind of sneaks into the conversation when you're not really looking for things, uh, and many, many people have been guilty of it. Um, and so how it works is, It starts with a true statement, which is that all bachelors are unmarried men. This is a tautology. This is absolutely true, always and in every case. Uh, then it has another true statement. Jeff, I am me, uh, is unmarried. I am not married, any ladies. Uh, and then see the conclusion of this argument form is or the, in this particular uh, argument instance is Jeff cannot marry. Well, it actually turns out that this is not true, uh, that, that this Jeff cannot marry, at least in the context of this particular argument. Um, this, this is not derivable from these two premises. It, it is invalid to derive this conclusion from those two premises alone. And yet it's strange because there's kind of this internal twisted logic to it because you know, I mean, if, if all bachelors are unmarried and Jeff is, or wait, no, Jeff is a bachelor. That makes more sense. Okay, so, yes, all bachelors aren't married, Jeff is a bachelor. There's a this relationship where Jeff is a part of this set of bachelors, and the conclusion, of course, Jeff cannot marry. So, wh what, is, what is wrong with this situation that, you know, even if look at the, the, the argument and it kind of makes internal coherence and it still isn't quite true. What, what is wrong with it? Well, I mean, let, let's look a little bit closer. We have A is true, or P1, P2 is also true. The conclusion C is, may even be true, but it, it doesn't have anything to do with these two, right? It's, I mean, it may have a little bit to do with this, and conceivably there, there may be some situations that it may have something to do with this, but it the, 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 the logical uh, connection between being an unmarried man uh, and all bachelors being unmarried men is not one that you can draw a conclusion of this kind from. And one way you can look at it, that, or w one way you can look at this particular kind of argument is the, the wideness and narrowness of the sense in which these claims are true. So for example, bachelors are all, unmarried men. This is a very wide general thing. Uh, it's a wide scope, always true. Whereas this one, it's, it's, it's more of a, kind of a, a narrow scope. There, there's two ways you can read Jeff is a bachelor. Uh, in this sense, there's a narrow scope and a wide scope. The narrow scope being that, you know, it is just a bachelor. Um, not necessarily or necessarily always a bachelor, but is currently a bachelor maybe is a bachelor in this you know, context, maybe is a bachelor uh, that we have, you know, we've noticed he is a bachelor. Um, 
you know, that whereas the wider sense is, you know, Jeff exemplifies the the, the, the class of bachelor, um, which again may also be true. But uh, there's there's this um, you know difference between the kind of wideness and the narrowness of the claim that at least casts doubt on the conclusion uh, if if the, the narrowness and wideness don't completely match up. Of course, that's a very general way of saying things. So we may need some kind of a more technical way of tearing this apart. Um, the other way you can look at this is whether or not the uh, claims are uh, contingent on logic or upon fact, upon the internal coherency of the statement and what's actually true when you go and look at it. So if you, you know, look at our first term, bachelors are unmarried men, uh, this you can look at in two senses. One is the tautological uh, or always true way which is that, yes, bachelors are unmarried men. And then the other is that you could actually go and look at each individual bachelor and ask, you know, are you married? No, of course not. And you can kind of go down the list. Of course, in the case of that sentence or, or, or statement, it is, you know, those two should always match up. Whereas in this one, it's going to be a little bit different, where you can go to your local, you know, me and ask, you know, are you a bachelor? And I will have an answer for you. And that answer will depend upon whether I'm in fact a bachelor. But it may not depend, or it may or may not depend on this cannot marry uh, aspect. And so, your, 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 if the two ever do clash, so if it, it turns out that Jeff can marry and that this you know, is, is false, which you know, I'm hoping that that's the case, of course, but uh, then there there should be a reason in in, in that sense that there is a uh, a, a, a fact about the world, or a fact about the universe, or a fact about Jeff, or, or some kind of a fact that you can observe, or, or that you can ask about and you can learn, that is more important than the, the coherency of, 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 you know, all bachelors are unmarried men, uh, in that it is a, a fact, you know, you, you go out into the world and you observe things, and, and even if your, your preconception of how things should work uh, conflicts with what you observe, you know, you, what you observe is, in fact, more important because you know you are, are you know you're, you're only at your your internal uh, preconceptions are only as good as your prior observations allow, and you know your your imagination allows before that. But once you encounter a actual evidence of things, you should actually believe the evidence. So and you should modify the the preconceptions and beliefs to account for them. So. You know, again, we're we're at this kind of looking at how we can, you know, spot spot this in real life. How we can kind of convince ourselves that this is not a, a valid argument, even though it kind of looks that way. And, you know, if you're not paying attention, it may seem that way. Uh, but in, in particular, the, the last thing worth pointing out is that this English doesn't make this easy to not do. Uh, the English language is full of all these ambiguous statements, especially in philosophy, where you can say multiple things at once, where you can say things and it's hard to tell exactly what you mean, or you know, nobody can tell exactly what you mean. Uh, and in those cases, you can sometimes get away, uh, or, or you know, with making this kind of argument, no one will catch you, or you know, people will make this argument and you won't be able to catch it. Um, but you know, again, it's, it, there's not much you can do about this. Uh, we all have to speak a language to communicate. English is what at least I've got. You know, we may be working on other things, but you know, patching language is hard. Uh, there's not much we can do about it. But um, you know, again, just keep an eye out for uh, arguments of the form where you have this kind of universal, tautological uh, precondition, uh, uh, another condition that is dependent on fact, uh, and the conclusion that relates the way those two are related into a conclusion. Uh, in an invalid way uh, in this particular sense. So you know, hopefully that made some sense. Uh, let's see if we can think of another example here from off the top of my head. Or websites. Uh, I thought I had another tab open, but it does not look like that. Anyway, so again, um, let's see. No, nothing coming to mind off the top of my head. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask. I will you know, look for another example in case somebody asks for one. But uh, 
you know, as usual, if you see this video posted in any comment threads or uh, you know, your YouTube thread, feel free to leave a comment. Um, and you know, hopefully the writing at the beginning won't be too confusing. So uh, again, this is Jeff Quinn, and hopefully you enjoy.